Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will go into chapter 7 that discusses engineers and organizations. And in this video, we will talk about organizational structure and management specifically. We will start by trying to identify the relationship between engineers and their managers. How does this dynamic work? And how should it be handled ethically? There is a subtle conflict between engineers and managers. On one end, engineers are loyal to their employers and customers. But on the other end, they must be loyal to their profession and society. And sometimes this may mean disobeying your employer. In many scenarios, managers do not have an engineering background, which makes communication between engineers and managers very challenging. Finally, engineers may aspire to be managers one day which may create a competitive environment with their managers. To alleviate this tension, it is important to identify the role of each party. Let's start with the functions of engineers. Engineers are responsible for using their technical knowledge and training to further their organizations and design products. Additionally, they need to make sure that the rules and standards of the profession are followed precisely. This leads to certain scenarios of dual loyalty under unique circumstances. On the other hand, managers look at all the possible business scenarios and make decisions that benefit the organization accordingly. Another main goal managers have is cost reduction, where they try to save as much money as they can. This passion for saving may cause them to conflict with engineers, especially on the costs required for ensuring safety. Based on those two definitions, we can identify two types of organizational decisions. Proper engineering decisions or PEDs and proper management decisions or PMDs. PEDs are decisions that should only be made by certified engineers because they involve technical decision-making and engineering knowledge. Also, PEDs should always fall within the ethical engineering standards. Decisions that should be made by managers are called PMDs. They involve making decisions that ensure the well-being of the organization. PMDs should not force engineers to compromise their ethical and professional integrity. To ensure ethical conduct, we must review the organizational culture. Many cultures operate by the business is business model, which makes room for immoral and unethical decisions. Also, most cultures value loyalty for the organization and peers over the loyalty towards the profession. Additionally, many organizations have systems that blur responsibilities so that liability can't be pinpointed to one person. Such approaches may not help engineers thrive ethically. Based on observation, we can identify three types of organizational cultures. We have engineer-oriented cultures where safety comes first, followed by quality, and then everything else. We also have customer-oriented cultures that prioritize profitability through reducing time and cost. Finally, we have finance-oriented companies that completely focus on money and profitability. Regardless of the organizational culture, an engineer must strive to be morally responsible. This can be done by understanding the organization you are working in and how its culture works. Through this understanding, you should be able to understand how the organization functions on all levels, and then develop your own approach on how to handle things in the organization ethically. The most favorable culture for engineers is a culture that encourages acting ethically. This is done through reporting bad news and critical loyalty, which prioritizes honesty and professionalism. A culture that focuses on issues and ideas. A culture that documents everything to track successes and failures. This culture must encourage confidentiality, especially for complaints. Also, it must be neutral and objective in conducting its affairs. 
Finally, such a culture must possess a set of rules and guidelines that ensures the safety of its employees at all times and from all forms of wrongdoing. While working in an organization, try to make sure that you do not fall into moonlighting. What is moonlighting, you might ask? Well, it is having another job after hours that is in the same field or a similar field to your full-time job. This activity would disrupt your loyalty and might consistently put you in a conflict of interest scenario. Thus, it is better avoided. Avoiding moonlighting helps you protect your reputation and the simplest way to do so is by being upfront and clear with your employer or company about any extra work activities that may seem to be similar. Verifying with your company can give you insight whether what you are doing is moonlighting or not. In class, we discussed wrongful termination laws and their implications, how to sue against wrongful termination, and what are the legal grounds for it. Check the video in the description for extra details. With wrongful termination, we close the first part of Chapter 7. In the next part, we will discuss organizational disobedience, so stay tuned.